Hi there, welcome to the new video. Today I'll be talking about this paper which is titled as Detecting Hallucinated Content in Conditional Neural Sequence Generation. This is from researchers from CMU and Facebook AI Research. So at very high level, the paper essentially talks about an important problem that kind of exists in current day's text generation system, which is that no doubt the current systems are fluent enough to generate syntactically correct and fluent text, but many studies have often showed that they still tend to generate the text that hallucinates. Or in other words, you can think of them being generating factually incorrect information. So this paper essentially focuses on automatically identifying and quantifying this generated text that is not faithful to the input text. So for example, if you have this input I, it goes to a system, let's call it as M, and it generates a certain output sequence O. So think of this setting as a machine translation, let's say, where the source language is S1 and the target language is S2. So the paper essentially now targets to find out the tokens or couple of tokens which could form as phrase, which the system says is kind of hallucinated. Let's call it as label one. And for rest, all of the tokens, it would say, these are not hallucinated. So this is the problem that they're trying to solve. And since such kind of paired data is also not available readily, so they also propose a data generation pipeline that kind of generates synthetic data on which the model is trained. So forget about solving this problem in the first place, which is we want a system that doesn't hallucinate. It's even a challenge for humans today to kind of detect where the hallucination has happened in the generated text. So this system is currently going to aid that use case. So yeah, that's the entire idea. Let's start with the abstract. Neural sequence models can generate highly fluent sentences, but recent studies have shown that they are prone to hallucinate additional content that is not supported in the input. So to detect these errors, we propose a task to predict whether each token in the output sequence is hallucinated or not. So for which they essentially fine tune a pre-trained language model on the synthetic data that their system generates, which is by automatically inserting the hallucinations. Okay. And they mostly experiment with machine translation and summarization tasks. So yeah. That's the idea. Now let's move further and see the entire method in detail. So as I discussed earlier, that they do a token level prediction saying whether a token is hallucinated or not. So for that, let's consider a source sequence S and the output that it generates is G. So you'll have some small G I to J, which is some subsequence within that capital G that is hallucinated. So now they define two types of hallucinations. First is extrinsic hallucination and the other one is intrinsic hallucinations. So if we see this figure, so let's say for machine translation task, this was the source input that we had that kind of says Mike goes to the bookstore on Thursday. So this gray color thing is what our model has generated at the output end. And it has made this prediction of one, one, zeros and ones, where one would mean a token is hallucinated and zero means it's not hallucinated. So if we compare this with the ground truth label, we can see like the model has said Jerry instead of Mike. It says happily, but there's no trace of happily or happiness mentioned over here. Goes to the bookstore is common. Then the output also generated a phrase with his friend, but which is nowhere mentioned in the input document. So clearly model has generated false information. But if we see, Mary is a named entity which is person. Mike is again named entity which is person. So here a replacement or substitution of the same entity has happened, which is one of the categories in which they classify hallucinations and they call it as intrinsic hallucination. Whereas for the phrases such as happily or with his friends, where no trace in the input also exists, for example, the word happily, right? If you see this input, there is no trace like happiness, excitement, any of those adjectives are mentioned, but still model has produced this extra information. So for such generations and mappings, they name this category as extrinsic hallucinations. So yeah, these are the two categories that they define. All the while modeling, they don't consider them separately. They just consider ones and zeros, mentioning if it's hallucinated or not. Okay. So for assessing the generations and hallucinations, they do a human assessment under which they provide the target text and give three options to the users, wherein they have to mark whether it's incomprehensible, whether it's faithful or not, or if it contains hallucination or not. So these three categories, they'll have to mark for a given output. And in case you mark that it has hallucination, then the annotators will be asked to kind of tag all the tokens that they think is hallucinated. And for all of this study, they chose group of people and not just single person, just to make sure that the annotations come via collaborative technique and are faithful. Also in these situations where typically you have group of people that are annotating your stuff, we usually calculate agreement score between the annotators 
that kind of hints towards the quality of annotation that we're receiving. So here the researchers have chosen Flies' Kappa for the use case. So I do have a video that talks about evaluating text generation systems, wherein I have talked about this technique in detail. I'll link that video in the i button, make sure to check that out. Okay, moving forward. Okay, so now talking about the main method, where they kind of fine tune an existing pre-trained language model. So since we have already discussed that they are doing a token level hallucination detection, so they model this entire thing as a sequence labeling problem with the labels as 0 and 1 for each position in the output text. For example, if this is the input text that we have, we generate the output against this and then we label each of the token over here, whether it's 0 or 1. So if we see this system specifically, this basically acts as a POS or named entity system because there again the logic is for each input token, you want to categorize in certain number of predefined labels. So yeah. But as I said, the data is not readily available for these kind of tasks. So they define a pipeline that generates this data artificially. So for this, they propose a system that automatically inserts new hallucinated target site tokens. So let's say if the target sequence was capital D and after doing the synthetic generation, you get a hallucinated version of this text, which is T dash. So if you see this figure, so let's say this is the targeted text. So we randomly mask a couple of words or phrases. So let's say this mask corresponds to on Thursday. This mark corresponds to the word Mike. We pass it through the pre-trained BART model, which again is a sequence sequence model that was trained on denoising objective. I do have a paper explanation for this one as well. I'll put that in the I button. Make sure to check that out. So BART will essentially see this as a noise. And the goal for this model would be to kind of fill these mask tokens. So let's say this is something that the bar generated. Jerry happily goes to the bookstore with his friend. So over here we know like the first mask was replaced with Jerry happily. The last mask was replaced with, with his friend. So these ought to be one, which means these are hallucinated and not present in the original targeted text. And rest whatever was not part of the mask token is directly copied and is marked as zero, signifying that it's not hallucinated. So yeah, this way you kind of generate synthetic samples. Okay. So that's what they have written, like they use the BART model and do not provide any access to the source sentence, thereby encouraging it to insert new content as needed to ensure fluency. Because in case they would have inserted a source sentence over here as well, all the mass tokens would have kind of self attended to the source token as well, which could have given more hint in terms of what has to be generated, which might have broken the fluency and doesn't even guarantee if we would generate hallucinated text or not. Rather in this case, if we just product the target sentence, model will have no prior information in terms of what has to be a part of this mass token rather based on the pre-training objective on a very large corpora on which Bart was trained. He'll try to output a couple of things from that knowledge and insert it over here so that the sentence also looks fluent and we are also kind of guaranteed to get the hallucinated text. So yeah. Okay. So the last thing is like, how do they do the label assignments? So we saw, right? This is what our system has generated this one, which was the original targeted text. So the question is, how do we get the zero one labels with surety? Like they'll be always correct. So for this, they use word level immensity in distance, which again is a measure of comparing how close two strings are based on the edit operations that you apply on string one to convert into string two. Now these edit operations are basically substitute, delete, additions, and all of these things. So over here, if you see, the red colored ones are the substitutions and the blue ones are that are supposed to be deleted. So if you substitute Jerry with Mike, if you delete happily word, so if you substitute this phrase with on Thursday and delete this token Friday, we're essentially converting the T dash into T. So they use this exact operation and then they backtrack to see how many words from T dash was substituted, added or deleted to convert it into the original targeted text. And eventually they would label one or zero against those tokens. So this again kind of guarantees you'll always get trustworthy labels. So yeah, we have our data generated now. Now the next task is to kind of fine tune a model on the synthetic data. So the way they do this is like this. Yeah. So this is a source sentence that you have. You put a separator token. This is the true target that the model has to replicate. Then you again put a separator token and then you input the hallucinated text that your BART model has generated. So this way you have a triple of source, actual target and hallucinated target. So basically this is one of the samples in your batch. 
you concatenate all of this and since because of the labeling strategy that you have based out of Levenstein distance you have ones and zeros against the hallucinated text tokens which you use as potential signals to back propagate the loss and make model learn the distribution of the hallucinated tokens so yeah this is one of the loss that they use they use another loss which is mass language modeling which again is typical to how BERT was trained where you mask some random words in the input sequence and at the output end you basically predict this masked word and based on what the actual word would have been you back propagate this loss and train the parameters of your model so they use this loss as well because they found this to work well so for this they created a different batch by concatenating only the source and the target tokens because adding a hallucinated target would kind of confuse the model by giving it some false information so that's why they just use source and target and the final loss that they defined for this entire task is L pred alpha loss of mass language modeling where alpha is again the parameter that controls how much you want this loss to be a part of entire loss where L pred is nothing but the binary label classification loss for every token for the synthetic target text so yeah that's the entire idea of the paper okay so they also mentioned one more thing as you can see like the L pred basically depends on true target as well but you might not have this during the test scenario so to make sure that the model is really not much dependent on this true target they employ two strategies so the first one is to randomly remove couple of words from the targeted text making it a lot noisy and kind of unattractive for the model to do self attention over there so that's one measure that they take and the second measure that they take is to kind of paraphrase this text and use the paraphrased version over here instead of the original one and after applying both of these techniques when they tested without this targeted text during the test scenario they found the model to be generating perfectly fine sentences okay we are done with the paper now cool having said that if you like such content make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel also share it across with your friends to whosoever is interested in such content i'll meet you in the next one bye bye and take care